بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله one of the biggest issues without a doubt where there is difference between أهل السنة and أهل التكفير people like Faisal Jamaiki uh, Omar Al Bakri groups like uh, SOS, I think they no longer exist, supporters of the Sharia, uh, groups like uh, Al-Muhajirun with Chaujuri, uh, Abu Hamza Misri, all these other Takfiri groups and the more extreme in implementation are manifestations like ISIS and Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, uh, Al-Qaeda and others. And one of the things in which they differ with Salafi, just one out of the many, comes down to the issue of ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. This is not going to be an in-depth study, which whole books and volumes of books have dealt with this, but I want to show some of the misconceptions that those Tekfiri groups, how they distort the minhaj of the Salaf and depart from the Salafi madhab and depart from, oddly enough, that they often rule by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, although they claim. And we've said this countless times. As the fuqaha say, the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So although a lot of these people claim to support the sharia, they yell, they scream, they protest, they do this and that and the other, you'll see that a lot of times they are the furthest people from the sharia and the implementation in their lives. And you'll find that one of the, for those ulama that have studied up on these contemporary tekfiris and tekfiri uh, ideologues that where they differ with the original Khawarij, the original Khawarij, Ahla Hadith took uh, a lot of their, accepted their Hadith because they were known to be severely truthful. They didn't lie. Whereas in the contemporary groups, you'll see some of them dressing as women to do uh, uh, suicide bombs, bombings and stuff like this. You'll see them go to the lowest level. They'll shave their beards. They'll do whatever. I'm not saying that that's the lowest level. There's lower than that. Dressing up as a woman is greater. So they will do things where they totally disregard and distort the Sharia to support their evil and wicked and sinister madhab. It's a madhab. It's not one issue. And the reason I, I discuss these issues about Faisal, because it's not one issue. You know, we can all say, the, according to the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> all the children of Adam make mistakes. And, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. But Faisal, Chaudhry, all these other uh, individuals, they have a methodology. They have a minhaj that they're on. It's, it's many issues where they make mistakes and go far from the Aqidah and far from the, uh, the Madhab and the Minhaj of Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'ah. We cannot regard them as Ahlul Sunnah. They are distorters of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala's religion and this is why they must be fought. And as for now, it's fighting with the pen and it's fighting with our voice against this. So I just want to mention just this one issue with regards to Faisal specifically and the others are all included in this. The issue of ruling by other than what Allah revealed. Because we need to keep this as short. Because I know we live in a 30 second uh, uh, listening span. Uh, as far as the way uh, people can um, listen and tolerate uh, things. It's a YouTube culture. And so we're going to do our best. Our absolute best. Only with the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts this on our scale of good deeds. Not on our scale of bad deeds. And we're going to do our best to be sincere and give you the truth. And we're going to start and get right into this. Uh, this issue of ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, so that way you don't have to listen further if you don't want to, is that this, unlike what, one of the, the, the asa where we differ, Ahl Sunnah versus uh, these takfiris, these takfiris say that it's all uh, 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 kufr al-akbar. It takes you out of the fold of Islam. Ahl Sunnah says la. We follow the book and the sunnah 
and the method of the Salaf. The Salaf said, and let's let's get down to the business now. And we're going to first show you that Kufr as a Sharia al or a Sharia term, uh, terminology, that it does not always refer to, obviously, uh, that which takes you out of the fold of Islam. So there is a such thing as co minor Kufr and major Kufr. First, we need to establish that and, and follow along with us. So first, we have to look at the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَإِنَّ الطَّائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتِلُوا فَأَصْلُهُ بَيْنَهُمَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, and when two parties from among the believers fight, meaning they're fighting, they're you know fighting each other to take one another's life, killing one another, فَأَصْلُهُ بَيْنَهُمَا then rectify between them. Uh, Imam Anjari رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم قال he said to him on Hujjah al-Wada, the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, Ansat al-Nas, you know, keep the people quiet. Estensat uh, al-Nas, you know, keep the people quiet. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, La tarja'u ba'di kufarin, yadru ba'dukum riqab ba'd. The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, do not become disbelievers after me by fighting one another, you know, striking the necks of one another. Uh, here we see that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used the term kufr, do not become kufarin, he said. Do not become disbelievers. We know from the usul of Ahl Sunnah, la ta'arad bayna kalami la wa kalami rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no uh, disagreement and there's no contradiction between what the Messenger وسلم, said and the Quran, what Allah Azza wa Jal says. There's no difference. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam referred to it as kufr. From this ayah and from this statement of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we can see that this is in reference to kufr al askar the minor kufr. Although the itlaq, the term that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used, was kuffar, you know, the disbelievers, okay, or, do, or don't become disbelievers. He referred to disbelievers, okay? What we understand because we know from other texts, and this is the difference between the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah looks at all the Sharia. They look at the Book of Allah. They look at the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They look at the Ijma. They look at the, uh, the, the, the Ruwayat of the Salaf, Salaf al-Salih, Ridwanullahi alayhim. They, they go back and they look at the, sh the Sharia because it's Shamil, so they look at it Shamil. They look at it in complete terms because this is how you have to understand the text. You don't understand the text, you take an ayat, and if you look at all these takfiris, especially their followers, they just pick and choose and they just make takfir of the whole planet. This one's a kafir. You said this. You must be a kafir. You're a murjia. You're this. It's amazing. Now let's get back on task. So we understand from this that a hukum bi Allah is kufr al askar. Now that's a difference. Ahl Sunnah says this, and let's show you where this is from Ahl Sunnah. It's not from Khalid Green. We know this, and this kufr al askar. It means that a person does not leave the fold of Islam and that's because we don't have any specification. We have other nasus to show that a person is still in the fold of Islam. So when, a t when two groups of Muslims fight, that doesn't make them both disbelievers or two Muslims fighting each other. That doesn't make them disbelievers, even if they're trying to kill each other. They're not disbelievers, but they are disbelievers in the sense that they have fallen into the minor kufr as a... Uh, as if you want to, as an, ad, an adjective describing the person that they have fallen into the minor kufr by taking the life of their fellow brother or fighting or having war between two Muslim uh, warring parties, but they are not out of the fold of Islam. And this is in accordance with, with Ijma the Salaf of this Ummah. Ijma the Salaf of this Ummah. We don't care about who you're talking about later and what you pick and choose and cut and paste to slice up to understand your minhaj. We're not concerned about that. We're talking about the Salaf. Let's get down to business. فَقَدْ فَسَرَ salaf al kufr fi qawlihi ta'ala Here's what the Salaf, uh, they explained regarding the term kufr, regarding the statement where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ We all know this ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
fi kitab al karim and whoever does not rule by whoever rules by other than what Allah reveals then they are disbelievers how do we understand that that's kufr la askar let's first go to the tafsir and we'll also look at another ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al karim wa man lam yahkum okay so when we break this down we look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and whoever does not uh, 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 rule okay so it's 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 am this itlaq is am it's it's general this thing that means that everyone that means you o takfiri when you make bid'ah in the deen you've fallen under this when you do some other kind of ruling which goes against the shar and that's another important point we're talking about things that go against the shar so for example i don't know anyone from ahl sunnah wal jamaa now that would say that traffic following traffic laws in america is disbelief and that that's ruling that's a rule that's a traffic rule and we have to go by that law. Does that mean we're now ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals? Absolutely not. And whoever says this is men abdallan nas. They are the most misguided of people. Because that is something in its asl, it's mubah. And it does not contradict the shar. It doesn't go against uh, the shar. That's a very important point about ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. That means it doesn't go against sharia laws. Tayyip. What did the Tarjuman al Quran say about this ayat? Not what Faisal said, not what Abu Hamza Misri said, not what Anjim, whatever his name, Chowdhury said. We don't care about that. We want to know what Ibn Abbas ta'anu said. Qal, laysa bi kufri yanqala Ibn Abbas said this. He said, it's not from the kufr that takes one out of the fold of Islam. Where does it come from? It comes from Dhakarahu Abu Ubaid. Fi kitab al-Iman, Imam Abu Ubaid, he mentioned this in his book, Al-Iman, wa akhraju haakam fi mustadrak, wa qala hadha hadith sahih isnad, wa lam yakhrajahu. Imam uh, Hakam, he also uh, declared that this was a sound uh, narration. And he also, and also the left, kufr dunu kufr, kufr, the, the lesser kufr. Tayyip, let's continue. Wa qal, also, Ibn Abbas said, "Laysa bi kufri alladhi yadhabuna ilayhi." It is not the disbelief which you know that uh, that uh, takes a person out of the fold of Islam. You know that yadhabuna ilayhi meaning it just totally negates its iman. Also, Ibn Abbas said, and that that narration is where where can we find that? Akhraju Marwazi, Imam Marwazi said this in his book. Ta'zim Qadr al-Salat. It's a very famous book of the Salaf about the importance of the prayer. Ta'ib. Waqal, he also said, meaning Ibn Abbas, huwa bihi kufra, wa laysa kaman kafra billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi. He said that it is disbelief, but it is not the disbelief like uh, disbelieving in, in Allah or his angels or his books or his messengers, meaning that there's a dis distinguishment, there, that there's the cell of distinguish between major kufr and minor kufr, and the ayat, the very ayat that those people raise over their head, like the original khawarij raised over their head, the Quran, and try to beat people up with those ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they use it to say, you've not ruled by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, you're a disbeliever. But here's what Tarjaman al-Quran says. So you take either... We go with the Salaf, you go with the Khalaf. Tayyib, Barakallah Fikum. Tayyib, this is also a narration that Imam uh, Marwazi, he mentioned in Ta'deem Qadr Salat, wa Hakam Kaman, uh, Imam Hakam in Mustadrak. Here's what some of the Salaf said, the Mufassireen, the, the, the meaning, we're, now we're talking about the Tab'een with Taba'a Tab'een. Qala Atta'i bin Rabah. Rahimahullah Ta'ala Qala Kufr Duna Kufr He said Kufr Duna Kufr This is the lesser Kufr That's being talked about here And this is uh, Imam Tabari Mentioned this in his Tafsir Wa Qala Ta'us Imam Ta'us also From the Tabi'een Or it's about uh, I believe the Tabi'een Laysa bi Kufri Yanqala Lamilla This is not from the disbelief Which takes you out of the religion uh, also, this is uh, this is mentioned. Akhraju Marwazi. This is also in Ta'dim bi Qadr uh, Ta'dim Qadr Salat. Also, uh, 
he said, Imam Tawus from the Mufassirin, he said, وَلَيْسَ كَمَانْ كَفَرَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And it's not like the one who disbelieves in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers. Uh, and this is also similar to the statement of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تلا عنه وعن سعيد بن جبير رحمه الله تعالى في قوله تعالى he said, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأُخْرَ in Surah Ali Imran, where he said, the, you know, about Ahl Zayg, the people who have disease in their heart, basically they, uh, they distort the book, and they take the ayat, they avoid the muhkamat, those clear ayat, and they take ayat that are ambiguous in their meaning, meaning that they're open to more in than one interpretation, they appear to be open to more than one interpretation, that... They use those ayat to build their aqidah, to build their minhaj. And this is what the takfiris do. He said, so every sect, they take verses, like the verse that we're talking about, and they use it to support their beliefs. And they use those, those ayat and those things which I have, uh, that are mutashabiyat, those things which are ambiguous. For example, you find the Sufis, the extreme ones amongst them, who grave worship. They will use Quranic verses to substantiate what they believe and, uh, and hadith. And that's amazing for something that's so clear in Tawheed. The clear ayat of Tawheed, which talk about shafa'ah, intercession and these things, they ignore. But they use things that they can use and distort the meaning. Here's one example how the extreme Sufis use the uh, one of the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, uh, uh, about worshipping Allah, حَتَّ يَأْتِيَكُمْ yakin." Or had to balagakum yakin, or kama kala subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, worship Allah until yakin, until certainty. So some of the extreme Sufis interpret that to mean that the one who has reached a level of iman and a level of certainty in, in their belief, they no longer have to worship Allah. No longer are they restricted to shara. And don't just believe my words on it, there's countless us about this and there's even people who believe this and still uh, practice these things. They say my sheikh, he, he went to Mecca and he made Hajj last night and it's not even the Hajj season and he's in Seattle, Washington for example or some other country. So this is, there are people who really believe this. Wallahu misan. And the point being is they distort the book in the, and the sunnah to support their beliefs. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala was asked about the verse, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلُ اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ uh, Imam Ahmed was asked, مَا هَذَا كُفْرَ So one of the students of Imam Ahmed said, what, what is this disbelief that's mentioned in this ayat? What, what is this referring to? Here's what Imam Ahmed said. Now again, compare this to what Faisal says. Imam Ahmed قال, كُفْرٌ لَا يَنْكُنْ عَنَ الْمِلَّةِ مثل الإيمان بعضه دون بعض فكذلك الكفر حتى يجي من ذلك الأمر لا يختلف فيه إمام أحمد said and you'll find this in uh, أحكام النساء by إمام أحمد in his book also Sheikh Islam mentioned this in his مجموعة فتاوى in uh, volume 7 page 253 uh, Imam Ahmed Taala, said when asked about this verse, he said, when they asked, you know, what kind of disbelief is this referring to? Imam Ahmed said, this is disbelief that does not take one out of the religion. Of course, we're talking about the religion of Islam. He said, like, for exa like the example of Iman, some of it, uh, some of it, you know, some, ba'dahu dun ba'd. Like so, some people, will have, you know, iman is camel, that some of it is less than others. You know, their deeds to follow it, iman to follow it. People have different levels of iman. 
He said, likewise, kofr, meaning people have different levels of, uh, of kofr. Until a command comes from this, that, that, that there's no difference over, meaning that there is no difference of this uh, over this point with the salaf. Let's look at also what Ibn Abdul Barr, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said. In his book, uh, I believe he said this in Tamheed, or where's this this statement is coming from? Yes, a Tamheed, which is a very important explanation, one of the most uh, great explanations of of Amata Imam Malik. He said, "Wa ajma'u ulama ala anna jor fil hukmi min al kabair liman ta'amid dalik alamin bi ruyat fi dalik athar shadidatun ala salaf." So he said that the scholars are united. They have consensus that the oppressor, meaning this one is a sinner, a sinner who's making mistakes in the shara. He's, he's ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. Bi hukum, ajur fi hukum. Min al kabair. This is from the major sins. Doesn't take out of the full slum. Liman ta'amid dalik. Alamin bi. So the one who, who is knowledgeable about it. He said, and this is, uh, this has been uh, narrated, or it has been narrated on a, uh, 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 a major group of the Salaf. Or there's major athar of the Salaf about this. There's many athar of the Salaf uh, regarding this. And then also Ibn Abdul Bar, he said also, he said this is also in Tamheed, he said, Waqal. وَقَدَ اتَّفَقُوا أَهْلَ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ وَهُمْ أَهْلَ الثِّقْوَ وَالْأَثَرِ عَلَى أَنَّ أَهَدًا لَا يَخْرُجُهُ ذِنْبُهُ وَإِنْ أَعْظُمْ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ He also said that أَهْلَ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ So this difference between the Khawarij and the Tekfiris. That's just a difference. It's a difference between Faisal's Madhab and the Madhab of Ahl Sunnah. So here we're going to talk about Ahl Sunnah. He said, Ahl Sunnah wa kad attafaku Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and they are the people of fiqh and the people of ethar, meaning the people of the narrations of the Salaf, uh, that no one leaves the fold of Islam for their sins. No matter how great they are. So this includes ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals because it's kufr al-eskar. It's a major sin, but in its origin, it doesn't take it out of the fold of Islam unless you the other conditions are involved. He said, Min al-Islam, from Islam. Imam Shanqiti brings us a little bit, uh, he, tawassa fi hadha. He, he gives us a bit more explanation. Listen to what Imam Shanqiti, one of the ma'asireen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions in his tafsir. He says, "Women, lem yahkum bima anzal Allah, ma'arada li rasul, wa ibtal li hukmi Allah. For zulmuhu, wa fiskuhu, wa kufruhu, kulha kufr makhrajan al milla." So here's what Imam Shankiti said. Now we haven't finished the statement. We're going to finish it in a minute. He said, "Whoever rules by other than what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reveals, uh, disregarding the and contradicting the message." The, the messengers, and making ibtal, falsifying the, uh, the, the rule of Allah, then his, his oppression, and his fisk, and his disbelief, all of it takes him out of the fold of Islam. And then what does he say after that? He said, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ مُعْتَقِدًا أَنْهُ مَرْتَقَبُ حَرَامٍ فَاعِلْ قَبِيهٍ so then Imam Shanqiti, he says, so here, that's what I mean, Ahl Sunnah, you know, takes the whole shirt. They don't just Mickey Mouse and, and cut and paste. He said, whoever rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, believing that he has done a major sin, you know, believing that he's, he's sinful in this, believing that he's done something haram, Doing this wicked sin, then his d disbelief and his oppression or wickedness and his fisk does not take him out of the fold of Islam. And that's what he said in his, uh, in his tafsir. So, Ahabatifillah, we've just mentioned some, and there's countless statements of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, Qadim and Wahadith, and about this. 
if we look at some of the uh, the methodology of the the Khawarij, the original sect, and we'll see a lot of the commonalities with the contemporary Tekfiris, like Faisal, and and the others that we've mentioned. Now take take a look at listen to the statement of uh, Abu Hussein al Malati in his Kitab at Tenbi. So this is one of the uh, it's called at Tenbi Warad al Ahl al Ahwa al Bid'a. So this is a, a, one of the classical texts. And here's what he said. He was talking about one of the original sects of the Khawarij, the Shara. The Shara. He said, كُلُّهُمْ يُكَفِّرُونَ أَصْحَابَ الْمَعَاسِي وَمَنْ خَالَفُهُمْ فِي مَذْهَبِهِمْ مَعَ الْإِخْتِلَافِ أَقَوِيلِهِمْ وَمَذَاهِبِهِمْ So, Imam Abu Hassan, he said, uh, Abu Hussein, he, he mentioned about this particular sect of the Khawarij that every one of them, they make takfir of the people, the, the major sinners. And whoever disagrees with them in their madhab, regardless of their various uh, madhabs and various uh, statements or viewpoints. The reason I mention this, so, so this is a trait of the original Khwarij. What does this have to do with Faisal? What does this have to do with these other Tekfiris that we're talking about? Well, this has to do with them because when you look, and I, and I promise you, listen to Faisal's tapes, for example, because we're going to mainly focus on him. Listen to his tapes and you'll see, I can't recall in, hardly any of his tapes in which he had insaf, which he at least had a type of justice when he talked about Salafis, when he talked about everybody, either they were all outside of the fold of Islam, whoever disagreed with him. I don't know anyone who he says, you know, they have a different viewpoint and they're wrong for this. But instead, it's always their monafic, their scholars for dollars. Da -da -da. This is what he says about the Salafis. Now, other groups, he just makes takfir and, and basically he says they're hypocrites and they're kuffar and, and everything else. So you see no insaf. So meaning that the original Khawarij, some of the sects, Basically, all the sects of the Khwarij, they pretty much shared this trait of those who differ with him. And this is a level of Hezbiya. This is where Hezbiya comes in. That those who differ with him, they're disbelievers. Okay? Or those who dis disbelieve with him, uh, di those who differ with him, they're disbelievers. It's enough said there because we don't want to get off top topic. Uh, Imam Ibn Hazm, he, he mentions in uh, his book... Uh, of Fasl fil Milal wal Ahwa wa Nahl, very famous book in about the early sects. He said, "Women wafik al Khawarij fi anqar tahkim, wa takfir ashab al kabair, wal qaul bil khuruj ala aimat al jur, wa an ashab al kabair mukhalidun fi nar, wa an al amamata, imamata jaiza fi ghair al Quraysh fuhu khariji, wa an khalafuhum." Imam Ibn Hazm, he says here, he says that whoever agrees with the Khawarij with regards to uh, negating, you know, men having any role in making, uh, adjudicating the tahkim, the, the rulership of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we need Islamic judges. We have to use the shar and we have to have people who, who make these judgments. And takfir is hab al kabair, and declaring to be disbelievers, the major sinners, and who declare uh, to make khuruj or rebel against the leaders, from uh, that are uh, even the disobedient leaders. Onto the rest of what he said, that they just their agreeance with the Khawarij, then they are from them. So this is why we make these types of rulings against people like Faisal, because he has, shares so much in common with his groups. It might not be Khalis in every bab, in every aspect of their, uh, you know, Faisal, I'm sure doesn't make takfir of the Sahaba, even though some have collected statements where he's belittled, uh, said some things unbefitting about prophets and, and Sahaba. But we, and in fact, I can recall him talking about, uh, one of the Sahaba, I can't believe it was, if it was, uh, he said the Sahaba, basically they had a shortcoming because they didn't kill the, the, the ones, those hypocrites amongst them who later became the Khawarij and were responsible for killing 
Uthman radiallahu ta'anu majma'in and Ali radiallahu ta'anu. This is absolutely a statement of Ahl al-Bid'ah. Well, ahwa, at best, you know, it's a very serious and dangerous statement. That's why you can't follow these types of people. And, and we're trying to share this with you with sincerity that, subhanAllah, and you'll defend this person. It amazes me how people will defend Batil. And, you know, what can you do? What can you say after that? Wallah, uh, Imam uh, uh, Abu Hassan al-Ashari, he said in his book, Muqalat uh, al-Islamiyin, uh, another very famous book about sectarianism. And he was talking about the Ibadiyya. Okay, he said, in in the Jamia, ma afarad Allahu Subhanahu wa Taala ala khalkihi iman when kulu kabira fihi a kufr kufr a nama la kufr a shirk when murtakabil kabair fi nar khalidun fiha. Actually, this statement is not necessarily re uh, relevant to what we're discussing, uh, but I think the point is is should be well understood with regards to those uh, those early Khawarij and the commonalities, uh, some of the similarities with some of these contemporary tekfiris. One of the major differences also between Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Tekfir is you will almost never hear those extreme tekfiris making uh, even discussing the issue of Mu'ana uh, Takfir, Iqamat al-Hujjah, and things like this. You never hear them. I've never heard, and I've listened to a lot of Faisal's tapes uh, back when they first hit the scene. So we're very familiar with those, but you never hear, heard any of those guys mention the Dawabit of Takfir, the criterion for making Takfir. Listen to what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says, and look how different... What you hear Faisal, you just hear him making judgments. Boom, this one's a kafir, this one's a monafic. The fact that Israel exists, those surrounding countries are disbelievers. The, you know, these are just educations of takfir as the way we drink water, he makes takfir like this. It's amazing. Listen to what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says. He says, وَلِهَذَا يَجِبُ اِحْتِرَاز مِنْ تَكْفِيرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِذْنُوبُ وَخَطَايَا فَإِنْهُ أَوَلَ بِدَعَ ظَهَرَتْ في الإسلام فكفر أهلها المسلمين واستحلوا دماءهم وأموالهم. So he says, uh, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, this is not an easy affair. It's an obligation for people to kind of free themselves and be cautious of making takfir of, of, of Muslims due to their sins and their mistakes. For verily the first bid'ah that came, that evolved in Islam was regarding uh, declaring the Muslims as disbelievers and making their blood lawful and their wealth lawful. How many times have you heard uh, Faisal give fatawa about, you know, you can steal this and these other supporters of the Sharia and Muhajirun and all these guys saying, you know, it's permissible to do this, it's permissible to do this because it's Donald Harb. Or, you know, you could kill somebody, you could do this, and you could rob and form, you know, all these kind of crazy things. And what evolves from their dawah? It's because it, it, it goes against the principles of Islam. And it follows the, the minhaj of the Khawarij. Here's what Shaykh al-Islam had said. In this point, I'm mentioning this statement of Shaykh al-Islam to show us that there's criterion for making takfir on al-ma'ayyanin. There's takfir al-ma'ayyan wa takfir al-mutlaq. The, the, the general takfir and there's the takfir of uh, when it comes to applying those principles to a specific individual. And here's what uh, Shaykh al-Islam is talking about in regards to that. He says, وَلَيْسَ لِي أَحَدْ أَنْ يُكَفْرَ أَحَدْ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَإِنْ أَخْفَى وَغَلَطَ حَتَّى تَقَامَ عَلَيَ الْحُجَّةِ وَتَبَيَنَ لَهُ الْمُحَجَّةِ وَمَنْ ثَبَتَ إِسْلَامُهُ بِيَقِينَ لَمْ يَزَلْ ذَلِكَ عَنْهُ بِالشَّكْ لَمْ ي لم يزل ذلك عنه بالشك بل لا يزول إلا بعد إقامة الحجة وإزالة الشبع. This is so important. Subhanallah. Look at the difference here. Again, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah he says it's not for anyone to uh, declare anyone from the Muslims to be a disbeliever for their sins and their mistakes or a mistake they made until the proof has been uh, presented to them. And the proofs have been uh, explained. Because he said, 
you know, and, and the and it's been clarified the, those proofs. You know, what what is what is the, the delil and the evidence? And he says, and whoever, and this is a principle of fiqh, and this is a principle of, of making a hukum. So listen to this principle. This is what Ahl Sunnah makes, uh, you know, tatbika qawaid. You know, Ahl Sunnah, they, they have principles and, and they, they establish those principles. Unlike Ahl Tikfir, Ahl Tikfir, their principles are just everyone's a kafir if they disagree with them and, and other false, falsified principles. So he said, وَمَنْ ثَبَتَ إِسْلَامِهِ or إِسْلَامُهُ بِيَقِينٍ لَمْ يَزَلْ ذَلِكَ عَنْهُ بِشَكْ Whoever's Islam has been established with yaqeen, whoever's Islam has been established with certainty, meaning we know this person to be a Muslim. This is also. Lem yizal dhalika anhu bishak. That means something doubtful whether this is kufr or not. We, we can't, you can't remove the fact that he's a Muslim based upon doubt. Meaning you can't make takfir on that person based on a doubtful hukum or a doubtful practice or even if it's something that you know to be disbelief or you've read to be disbelief or it's been translated to you that it's disbelief, you can't just remove them from Islam like that. It's not an easy affair. Then Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, وَمَنْ ثَبَتَ إِسْلَامِهِ بِيَقِينَ لَمْ يَزَلْ ذَلِكَ عَنْهُ بِشَقْ بَلْ He says, rather, لَا يَزِلْ إِلَّا بَعْدَ إِقَامَةُ الْحُجُ he said, rather, it is not removed from him, meaning his iman and the fact that he's a Muslim and the ism Islam is not removed from, him, removed from him until the proof has been established. They understand that, uh, that proof and they don't have doubts about that. Wa'azala tashuba, you know, the, the doubt that he fell into that, that allowed for him to rule by other than what Allah revealed or whatever issue of, of disbelief that he fell into if it's an issue of disbelief at all. Because what you find from Faisal and those guys making takfir for new reasons. Reasons we don't have anything from the Salaf. We don't have anything in Islam. Men sabaka biha the qol. Who preceded you in these statements to say that the Muslim countries, the surrounding countries are disbelievers because Israel exists and, and they're not at war at, at the current state or they have a peace treaty. How can you say this? Where is this coming from? Allah Mr. One of the differences that you see between uh, Faisal and these other groups, these Tekfiri groups, and these Tekfiri ideologues, compared to them in Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah and the Salaf al-Salih, Ridwan Allahi you'll see a difference in the way they understand the Nasus. For example, for them, they say things like, oh, such and such country, which many of the Muslim countries do have alcohol and bars and things like this, or at a minimum, they have uh, banks that contain riba. Okay, this is clear. I don't think there's a place on the earth on the planet, any country that doesn't uh, have uh, deal with interest. So they say that the fact that that's going on in those lands and this and that and the other, and they use this, that they're disbelievers because they're making it lawful. Okay, this is a new understanding. This isn't an understanding of Ahlul Sunnah with Jama'ah. Sheikh Al Islam mentions, and Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Al Qayyim as well, that istihlal is a is an issue of the heart. And it's not just an issue of actions. Otherwise, every time you're doing some major sin. Does that mean you've now made it lawful and you're a disbeliever? Say the one who's addicted to pornography. We know it's a major sin, masturbating. And they masturbate every day and they do it five times a day and they're watching pornography, akramakum Allah. Are they a disbeliever now? Have they made a stihlal? According to those tekfiris and their understanding with regards to rulership, and for the rulers, they have a criterion that the rulers have, have a ruled by other than what Allah will reveal because they have Reba banks or something like this. This is Muharram. But it doesn't make it istihlal. Even if they gave permission for that to operate there, that does not make it istihlal. Istihlal is an affair of the heart. And we talked about that in our master's research uh, for those who want to go back to that. And so one thing is a difference between Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah is not quick to make takfir. For example, the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, majma'in, the way they were with uh, Qudama ibn uh, Mad'un and those other companions who were drinking alcohol. They were drinking alcohol. These are companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum And, you know, so they, they thought from their ta'wil, they thought that they, you know, that this was excusable, that it was okay for them. Okay? The Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, didn't make takfir of them for this, because this was a type of istihlal, making it lawful. Not just because they were doing it, because they believed 
And that's aqidah. They believe it was halal. So it's not like you rush to make takfir. Look at the sahaba and look at the madhab of these modern day people. These modern day people don't give anybody a chance, anybody excuse. He's a new Muslim. He has a girlfriend. He believes it's halal. Disbeliever. This one was doing this. Disbeliever. Disbeliever. All you hear about them is making takfir and asking questions about takfir and emotioning themselves in takfir. The Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anhum, their madhab, which is the madhab of the Salaf al which is the Salafi madhab, they don't, it's not like that. So the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anhum, they didn't make us, they didn't, they, that though, although uh, uh, Qadama was making istihlal, they didn't make takfir of him. They required for him to make toba, and if he were to continue on that, continue on that, and continue in that belief, then he would be a disbeliever. But look at that. Look at how they were aqama ali al those implementation of the conditions of takfir. So different than the khawarij and then modern day takfiri groups. Listen to the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Qal, in tasli, and this is about, this is another difference where you see between the, the takfiris and Ahlul Sunnah. Ahlul Sunnah, they give respect to the scholars, the scholars of Islam, and the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah most specifically, not the scholars of Ahlul Bid'ah. But these people will give al-qab to Ahlul Sunnah. They're uh, murjia, they are scholars for dollars, they're this, they're this, uh, scholars of the sultan, uh, you know, of the leader, you know, all these kind of crazy uh, names. SubhanAllah, why they sit in the lands of disbelief, and a lot of them, Allah understand their how. Allah knows best their their condition and their status. Here's what Ahlul Sunnah, Shaykh Salam said, in the taslit of juhal. He said that then, then this uh, ruling and this uh, overcoming and this this practice of the ignorant ones, he said a jahal of making takfir of the scholars of the Muslims. It's from one of the greatest types of munkarat, greatest types of sins. Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, you know, this is one of the greatest crimes that these, these takfiris are doing by making takfir of the Muslims. And he said, in this asl, this foundation, this is the foundation of Faisal. How many times, you know, I, I've talked to so many of his followers who don't know Arabic. They, I came back from Yemen. They want to talk to me and debate. The first thing they ask me, do you have any anashit? Okay, they didn't ask about, do you have anything? What knowledge have you got? You know, can you teach us Arabic? Can you do this? They wanted to know about anashit. And the second thing they wanted, they said, right off their tongues, and some of them were major pornographers, meaning that they were, so, they were open sinners. One, Guy, I don't want to... The zina that was so known for th these characters, some of these guys. And all they talked about was jihad. And all they talked about was making takfir of the, the scholars. He said, Ben Baz is a munafik. Uh, 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 ben Othaymin is a kafir. This one is this. this A'udhu billah. This is what they... They were juhal with a capital ja. Right. So, he said, وَإِنَّمَا asl. He said, verily this foundation that this is from the Khawarij. This is the foundation of the Khawarij. Wa Ru'afid and the, the uh, Ru'afid the Shia. Those who make takfir of the leaders of the Muslims, the Imat al-Muslimin, or the Imams of the Muslims, for what they believe, this is an important ibarah, because he said, لِمَا يَعْتَقَدُوا أَنَّهُمْ أَخْطَأُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الدِّينِ From what they believe, meaning there's probably, there's doubt in what they think. It's what they believe. And this is what you, how, how much dhan can we say in the ahkam of Faisal and those, those guys have so much dhan, it's ridiculous that he, he thinks this one is a disbeliever. He thinks this one disbeliever. If someone, a hypocrite, flees to parliament, I remember a fatwa that he made in one of his tapes about someone who's a hypocrite and even if he went to and escaped to the house of parliament or something like this, you could go in there and kill him. This is what this guy says. You know, this is what kind of, you know, his ahkam was just all dhaniya, was all based upon his dhan, his, his, his doubtful thing. So it's what they believe. They make takfir based upon what they think, their views, their opinions. Instead of kitabi la wa sunnatu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa fahma salafa hadhi ummah. So he says uh, that for what they believe that they have made mistakes in regarding the deen. 
And he said, and the scholars of Ahlus and, and Ahl Sunnity will Jama'ah are in agreement that the scholars of the Muslims, that it's not permissible to make takfir to them uh, just because of some mistake. Subhanallah. Such a difference between Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Takfir. And a last point I want to make about these, uh, you'll also find in, in uh, Faisal in the, and others, is what is, uh, some of the scholars, they mention what is called uh, takfir, um, takfir by, uh, oh, takfir lazima, something similar to this. And what it means basically is it's almost like a site to silsila fi takfir, that they, they have a, a takfir, and it's like a continuous thing. And I'll give you an example. One takfiri I met, and I was in the United Arab Emirates, and we got in this discussion, and it turned into being a big debate. My Arabic was limited at that time, but I held my own, and he was a Jordanian, young guy. And it got so bad, and I remember they called the Adhan, and this is a true story. And I said, Khalas, forget it. And there was another brother with me from Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan, I can't remember. Good brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him, wherever he is. And so he said, Khalas, Khalas, and you know, let's go, it's time to pray. You know what the guy, the Tekfiti said? He said, I don't pray in the masjids here. He said, because the government is disbelievers, the imams are uh, disbelievers because they're getting a salary from the government, and the people who pray in there are hypocrites because they are praying behind disbelievers. And the, and the Mu'edhan also is a hypocrite because he's getting a salary and he's calling the Adhan for this. And he would not pray in the masjid. I said, subhanAllah, you are Ahlul Bal... Or I said uh, something like, you are uh, misguided. And he's... I forgot what he said to me. And it made me so mad. The brother pulled me back and then we just went to the masjid. But that was such a powerful lesson because I'd never seen or even heard of that before. And now I see it in the books and you hear it in the statements of people like Faisal and others. That it's a, you know, they say this one's a disbeliever and because this one's with him, he's a disbeliever and the police are this and this one is this and this one. And it just goes on until everyone around them is a disbeliever. And this is called tasilsila fi takfir or takfir, takfir bi lazim. So you'll see this also with the modern day contemporary groups. And this was also a trait of the original Khawarij. So if we listen and look at some of the statements of Faisal, here's one of the, uh, the statements of Faisal he said in one of his lectures. And it just goes to show you this, uh, the minhaj of blood and the minhaj of, of, uh, of takfir that he uh, embarked on and preached. And this was his lecture. I think it, it had to do with uh, Tawheed al-Hakamiya. He said, this drives home to you the importance of the Islamic Sharia, the importance of hating the Tagut, the importance of hating those who dismantle the Sharia, the importance of condemning the system, the importance of killing the Tagut. So for him, it's about violence, although we don't know of any actions that he necessarily took. Here's another statement where he makes takfir. There's no Qama Aliyah al hajj all those things we mentioned that Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said and all the ulama of Islam talking about establishing the proof and what and the statements we mentioned of the Sahaba. But here's what Faisal has to say instead. And if you are living in this country and a person approaches you and you, and you uh, say, what do you think about the system? And you say, to yourself or you say to the person, Alhamdulillah, it's not a bad system. It's a good system. Even though my name is Muhammad, I'm allowed to sign on and on top of that, I live in the royal borough of Kingston. Uh, Kingston or Kes Kenningston, Ken Kenningston and Chelsea. I can't complain. Now you're in the system and you can't see anything wrong with the system. You say it's okay. Just to give that answer, it's okay. You become a Kafir. The guy, he was just establishing the proof and establishing the hujjah and any kind of da'wah. Another statement of Faisal, a classic, uh, in his classic uh, takfir, and shows his methodology. Here's what he said about Ahl Sunnah, about the Salafis. He said, uh, if, or, no, he didn't, yeah, here's what he said. He said, 
if he is, and this is his uh, lecture, I believe is entitled uh, something of the Saudi Salafis, Conspiracy of the Salaf Saudi Salafis, something like this. He said, if he is a supporter of Kufr, a Saudi Salafi, meaning if you're a Salafi, basically Salafis, anyway, this is what he, he believes, Saudi Salafi, he had this, uh, this uh, claim. He said, you have to kill him and chop off his head. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. This is how you, there was no uh, discussion based on the book and the sunnah and bringing the hujjah, establishing the proof. But according to Faisal, because he thought, believed them to be kafirs, there was no way of discussion. It was, we need to chop their heads off. This is his menhaj, his methodology, instead of going back to the book and the sunnah. So we have countless statements in his lectures. Uh, here, here's one of the things he, he said about Sheikh uh, Ben Baz. He said because of the fatwa of allowing non-Muslims, and that's a whole nother bab, and we can go to the Salaf uh, with regards to this too. He says Sheikh Ben Baz died, and he did not take back his fatwa, so his entry into paradise is in grave jeopardy. So here he's making his hukum, uh, aside from his tikfir, you know, about what he believes Ben Baz and his status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's making a hukum about the ghayb. Is this not him making a judgment about Ben Baz's stat uh, st uh, status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Amur al ghaybiyah These are uh, matters of the unseen. And these are principles of Ahlul Sunnah. That we don't make, uh, we don't declare anyone to be in the hellfire or anyone to be in Jannah without Nasus, without text. But here Faisal, because he, of the dhaniya that we talked about before, because of a lot of his hukum, his ahkam are based on dhan, his view, his rai, his opinion, okay? Then he's now making a, a, a judgment about the, uh, the hereafter and about the ghayb, unseen, that he is no hand in, no place. Is this not perhaps, this could almost be something that could almost be into a kufr, an act of kufr itself. This is very dangerous. This is why I warn people against th these types of individuals and their deviant ideology and why you always find that these same guys contradict themselves. They begin to rule by other than what Allah revealed. Who preceded you in these types of statements that you can make these judgments about imams like this? So there's countless statements like this. And among some of the uh, statements of Faisal, in which he tries to belittle Ahlul Sunnati with Jama'a because of his exalting newly invented matters, such as his making Tawheed al Hakamiyah a fourth category of Tawheed, when the only people who really preceded him in making this a category like this uh, were groups, people, ideologues like Sayyid Qutb and Maududi. And you'll find Maududi in their works you'll find that they wrote extensively about these concepts. And then the modern day groups after them, a lot of the Tekfiti groups, you know, took this on and began to promote this. And this is why Ahlul Sunnah says, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hakamiyah, this is within his, uh, his, his rububiyah and his, his lordship and is within his, his uh, uluhiyah, that this is an implementation of Tawheed and an act of worship by practicing the sharq. But Faisal, what you'll find is, uh, you'll hear statements like this. Here's one of the statements that Faisal mentioned in one of his lectures. He says, I suggest you don't embarrass yourself and promote the Aqidah of Kufr Dunul Kufr. Because when you promote this dodgy Aqidah, and this is the Aqidah of the Salafis. Yes, he's right. It's the Aqidah of the Salaf, as we mentioned. We already gave our evidence. May the curse of Allah be upon them in this life and the hereafter, he says. And anyone who promotes the Aqidah of Kufr Dunul Kufr, this person is an enemy of Allah, his Rasul, and Islam. SubhanAllah. So he's declared that so much, so many of the Salaf, the Tabi'een, the Sahaba, Tabi'een, Itba Tabi'een, and the Imams of the Deen, how many A'imat al Muslimin, he makes these types of fatwa. Where did these come from? Who said this before him? Made these kind of declarations of takfir, because if you make the curse on somebody, that means when you make la'in, la'in means tard min rahmatillah, that you are making, you are asking that the mercy of Allah be removed from that person. And you are doing that because you believe that person either to be a disbeliever or a hypocrite or 
as a type of uh, real severe threat of, of punishment and torment. He says, he then goes on to say that they're the enemy of Allah and his messenger and Islam, subhanAllah. When you become an enemy, that means khalas. You are definitely, this is a, a de declaration of takfir. He also mentions the Jews love Judaism more than the Muslims love Islam. This is why they have a Jewish state and we don't have an Islamic state. So he's declared all the states they are not, not, not Islamic. The whole world is Dar al Kufr to Faisal. The Jewish rabbis are more sincere to their false religion than our Islamic scholars who are not sincere to our religion. Islam is a religion without scholars. SubhanAllah. Islam is a religion about scholars. The Prophet ﷺ said, There won't be a cease to be a, a group from my ummah that are on the truth. Ahl Sunnah is mujud. They will always be around until until the day of judgment. Until the day of judgment. There will be ulama. There will be, or in the last days, there's other ahadith that mention that the, you know, it will just be ignorant and they're ignorant, uh, so the scholars will be removed. But subhanAllah, it's amazing the itiqad of this, this man and his brazen fatawa. Here's uh, another thing he says, uh, and even if they implemented the Sharia, he was talking about, I believe, the Taliban, he said, still they'd be kafir. So it, wasn't, it wouldn't be sufficient that these ones that he's already made takfir of, uh, based on his his view and his his viewpoint, that uh, he's then saying even if they implemented the Sharia, they would still be kafirs because they give their allegiance, their bayah, their oath of allegiance to the UN. The UN is an organization of of uh, of pacts and understandings between nations of the world, and we know that in Islam it's permissible to have agreements with Muslim and non-Muslims. Subhanallah. Amazing, amazing. Uh, another uh, illustration of his, his takfir and his hatred of Ahl Sunnah, he said, the Saudi Salafis, they are your enemies. In fact, they are your greatest enemies because they guise themselves. They hide themselves in clothing of righteousness and piety with a beard and a white thobe. Some of them speak Arabic, yet they use their knowledge of Arabic to cement the throne of the apostate leaders. These are the nine enemies who you have to fight in this world today. So I think it goes without saying it. It doesn't take reading many of his statements to see how easy he was with takfir. And there are countless statements, but I don't want to spend... Uh, too much more time involved in this. I hope that the point is made and that it's understood in light of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf compared to the Madhab of Faisal and the other Takfiris. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything that I said was correct was from Allah Jal. Anything that I said was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Ali wa Sahbihi Wasallam.